The topic of this video is why low battery voltage sometimes breaks car modules. And how it happens? Well, you are uh, working on a car, uh, checking its electrical components, and as a result you are turning on and off some loads, for example headlights or cranking it, and the battery voltage is becoming somewhat low over time. And then at some point you do something like trying to crank a car and its battery voltage goes quite a bit down but then it recovers after you stop cranking and then you notice that one of the car modules died. And well, that is really frustrating but we are going to see how this can happen. So the car modules uh, are being fed by the same battery voltage, but the chips inside the car modules do not use 12 volts. They typically use the voltages that are lower, something like 5 volts. So there should be a voltage regulator that accepts a battery voltage and then converts it into 5 volts, usually filtered by some capacitor. And of course, each component should have a ground. So what do we see at the chip? We see 5 volts at first, but when there is a sudden drop in the battery voltage, then the voltage regulator is not long, longer capable of maintaining 5 volts and the voltage there will drop as well. And sometimes the voltage regulator, depending on its design, decides to turn the power off completely. So we will see a sharp drop in the voltage. But when the system voltage returns, back to uh, whatever it was before, then the voltage regulator will start working again and we'll see the power coming back to 5 volts eventually. What happens to the chip under such conditions? Well, first of all, most of the chips have something called BOD, brown out detector that stops executing commands once the voltage reaches some critical value. So we can expect the BOD to kick in at this point. And this is already good because you don't want to execute instructions under uh, low voltage conditions because the results of those instructions will be just pure garbage. But that's not enough, uh, because if the battery voltage, uh, sorry, if the voltage at the chip goes even lower, then the memory in the chip will start getting corrupted. And this is very bad situation. And to combat that, there should be a reset circuit present that does the following. It monitors the voltage at the chip and if this voltage goes below a certain value, then it sends a reset signal to the reset pin of the chip. So let's see how it looks like. So when everything is normal, the reset signal is high, but somewhere around here it should drop right to zero. And at this point the chip is officially in reset state. Now let's take a look what happens here 
when the voltage is really low. The volatile memory of the chip will start getting corrupted at this point. And to illustrate that, we need to understand what kind of memory we have in the chip. So processors have something called registers and also RAM. The same kind of RAM that you have in your desktop computer, but um, of course you have a lot smaller uh, space there, kilobytes instead of gigabytes. Also we have flash. This is equivalent to the solid state drives or hard disk drives for desktop computers. And this is the memory that doesn't get cleared when the power goes off. This memory is preserved and this is where the program is stored so that it can be executed each time the uh, controller boots up. However, this memory on the left will get cleared after the power goes off. But when the power is just very low, then it, uh, its contents is random. So it will start containing garbage. If the processor starts working again when this memory is random, then it will start executing garbage. And what's interesting about that is that with some probability the garbage will contain instructions to write into the flash memory. So it's quite possible that at some point you will have some chunks of data in the flash being either erased or overwritten with some information that is uh, random. And in effect, it's like bad sectors appearing on your hard disk drive. The result of that is catastrophic because when you reboot such a module, instead of executing the program that originally was in the flash, it will start executing again garbage. And most likely the processor will either go into some infinite loop or uh, lock up completely, but in any, any way it's not going to do what you want it. The module is essentially bricked at this point. So under no circumstances the processor should start working again while its memory, uh, this volatile memory, uh, has garbage in it. And this is the purpose of the reset circuit again is to delay this moment of when to go back up. So it should go back up only when the power at the chip stabilized back at 5 volts and that will allow the processor to run again from scratch. However, it doesn't always happen. Sometimes due to mismatch and specifications this delay is not long enough and the reset circuit would go high too early while the power is still unstable. And if that happens you get exactly that situation where the processor wakes up at random memory states and start executing garbage potentially damaging its flash memory and this this is it. The game is over. The module is bricked. It is important to note that the module is not physically damaged by this. It's only the program that is erased or corrupted in the flash memory. So it is possible to restore the module by uh, connecting a, an in-circuit programmer directly to the chip and uh, restoring the original program. Of course, this requires specialized equipment and uh, the program code, and so it's not easy to 
be done but it is possible however it doesn't really fixes the original problem because because if this low battery voltage situation happens again there is a chance that the module will get bricked again so it's better to get an updated module that has all the components spec'd correctly voltage regulator the reset circuit and uh, the chip working all together to prevent such a situation all right so this is it on this topic i hope you enjoyed the video and if you have any comments or I other ideas of how a low voltage can uh, break the modules just write in the comments below